What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck in battle here on PTCGO and today we're taking a look at yet another new deck from Ultra Prism and that is going to be Dustmane Necrozma GX Garboder or Metal Garboder or you know whatever you want to call this deck. Uh, but basically it centers around Dustmane Necrozma GX plus some other metal attackers and we're kind of foregoing Magnezone entirely. I'm just setting up through other uh, you know maybe more consistent means but of course we also have the Garboder like I just touched on as well. And this deck is actually pretty interesting. You know I don't know if you guys saw my my recent Collinsville regionals report, but one of the decks I was actually heavily considering uh, taking to the event was a turbo metal uh, type of deck similar to this with Max Luxers and Registeel and stuff like that. Uh, I ended up not playing it, but I ran to a buddy of mine at the tournament. He was telling me he was playing a deck kind of like this, but with Garboder. And I thought that was really cool. So uh, on day two of the event, I played at the League Challenge at Regionals, and I went 5-1 with the same list. I thought the Garboder idea was really cool and wanted to try it out. And I figured I'd show it off here on the channel for you guys, too. So let's take a look at the deck and see what it's all about. So of course the main attacker though is going to be Dustmane the Krozma GX, the new tanky beat stick that came out of uh, Ultra Prism. So 190 hit points, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, it's pretty tanky Pokemon. But the main attacks we're really looking at here are going to be Meteor Tempest for 3 metal and a colorless. You do 220 and discard 3 energy from this Pokemon. And then Sun's Eclipse GX for 3 metal energy. You do 250, but you can only use the attack if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. So this is kind of our main attacker in this deck. We're just trying to take giant one-hit knockouts. Uh, so Dustman across, like I said, the main star of the show. We're going to be foregoing Magazone and powering up this guy through other means. But we are still running some other backup attackers in this deck as well. So the first one we're going to talk about is going to be one copy of Celesteela GX. Yet another huge tanky metal type Pokemon, 200 hit points. Uh, one reason we're playing this, though, is because it has some different stats on it than the rest of our metal Pokemon. It's weak to lightning instead of fire, which can be nice if you're going against a Volcanion deck or something like that. Also resistant to fighting, which is very nice. We have things like Lycanroc uh, and Buzzwell both floating around in the current format, so definitely a good resistance to have. Uh, but one of the main reasons we're playing Celesteel is because it's a decent attacker that doesn't have to discard its own energy every time it attacks. So this can be especially good against decks that play a lot of non-GXs just because discarding 3 energy every time you want to take one prize can be a little bit inefficient. So sometimes Celesteel GX can be a little bit better in these certain situations. And also you have a great alternate GX move to make use of as well. So Celesteel GX has Blaster GX for one metal and four colorless, you do 180. And then you turn all of your prize cards face up for the rest of the game. So with the choice band, you're hitting 210, which means you knock out things like Zorark GX. Uh, Lycanroc GX, Golisopod GX, etc. So being able to take a one-hit knockout on these Stage 1 GXs that are so popular and putting all of your prize cards face up for the rest of the game is pretty powerful. So Celesteel, it's a little bit more situational than Duskmane, but it definitely has uh, some good things going for it as well. But then we are also playing one Cobalion. This is going to be our kind of late game uh, sweeper of the deck potentially. So it's a basic 120 hit point Pokemon, has this attack or revenge blast for two metal energy, it does 30, plus 30 more for every prize card your opponent has taken. So that means if they've taken five prizes, you're hitting for 180, or again, 210 if you have a choice ban, which is again, yet another really great number to hit for. Also, if your opponent has taken four prizes, you know, maybe just knocking out two of your Dusk Mains uh, with a choice ban, you can hit for 180, which means you can still knock out basic GXs uh, other than Buzzwool and uh, Duskmane, but you can knock out things like Tapu Bulu, you can knock out Volcanion, you can knock out Tapu Lele. So Revenge Blast in conjunction with Choice Pan is just a very, very good attack. But Cobalion actually does have another uh, kind of underrated attack, and that's going to be Quick Guard. Just for a single metal energy, you prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. But then you can't use Quick Guard the next turn either. So this is actually good against a number of different Pokemon in the current format. Of course we have Tapu Lele, but as far as more heavy hitting basic Pokemon goes, we have things like Tapu Bulu GX and Volcanion GX. Uh, similarly, other Duskmane Necrozma GXs. Lots of good uh, basic GXs that are worth walling against. So kind of an underrated aspect of the card as well, especially if you go first with this against some of these decks. Uh, this can be a very, very annoying attack for your opponent to deal with. But Revenge Blast is kind of going to be the star of the show. 
then like I mentioned before, we are not playing Magnezone. We're kind of opting to just power up our attackers through other means. And the first way is going to be with Registeel. So Registeel, it's that card back from Crimson Invasion. And it has this attack turbo arm for just a single metal energy does 30 damage. And you attach a basic energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So very similar to the Eveltal uh, that we've seen in the past, but for metal Pokemon. So this is very nice because in the early game you can you know sycamore waste some metal energy and just start powering up your dusk mains with turbo arm and max luxers and stuff like that uh, also if your dusk mains get knocked out midway through the game you can pivot to a registeel and start setting up your board again that way as well 130 hit points is actually very nice as well that means you're going to survive a hit from zora arc decks unless of course they play like a professor kukui or something like that also you'll survive a hit from go lysopod uh, etc. So just a nice amount of HP that Registeel has too. And the other, I think, key way we're going to accelerate energy in this deck is going to be the new Solgaleo Prism Star, one of these new Prism Star cards that came out of Ultra Prism. So you can only have one of these in your deck, and when it gets discarded, it goes to the Lost Zone instead. But the reason we're playing this is for this first attack, which is amazing. It's a Radiant Star for a single Metal Energy. For each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a Metal Energy card from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way that you like. So that means, you know, midway through the game, once you've drained some energy, uh, on your Dustman Crosmos, you can pivot to Solgoy of Prism Star and maybe attach up to six energy out of your discard pile in any way that you like. So kind of how this deck normally goes in my experience is you'll take two prizes, or I'm sorry, two knockouts in the mid game with Duskmane Necrozma getting four prizes, usually leaving your board a little bit awkward. So from there, you can pivot to Solgaleo and reset up your board and, uh, you know, kind of threaten the last GX or EX knockout. So kind of similar to the Solgaleo GX deck in a way it has kind of a similar issue. Um, but Solgaleo Prism Star in conjunction with Registeel uh, just really helps alleviate this problem. And also, Solgaleo Prism Star has another very solid attack, Corona Impact. 160 damage for 4 metal energy, and then this Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. So with the Choice Band, you hit for 190, which means you knock out uh, a, basically every basic GX that's currently in the format. So you don't use this attack quite as often, but it is nice that you do have the option to kind of go aggro with this Solgaleo and uh, take knockouts that way. Also is good against a lot of the non-GX decks, since you don't have to discard your energy uh, every time that you want to attack as well. And going on, we also have, of course, two copies of Tapu Lele for that one new tag ability just to get supporters out of our deck. But since we do play Max Elixir and other ways of energy acceleration, we can actually make use of Energy Drive as well. Kind of another half-decent attack that doesn't require us to discard our resources. So we do have that option as well. And the last key component of the Pokemon line is going to be a 2-2 Garbiter line. So this is the one with that Garbatoxin ability. As long as it has a tool card attached to it, each Pokemon in play hand and discard has no abilities other than Garbatoxin, of course. So you have this really, really aggressive uh, you know, beat stick in the form of Dustmane Necrozma GX. And then once you throw in something like Garbiter to add an element of control to the deck, I really think that makes this deck super, super strong. We play some other... Uh, cute little defensive options in this deck as well, which we'll get to shortly. But Garbatoxin really nice and helps against some of this deck's maybe less than favorable matchups otherwise. So that's it for the Pokemon line, guys. Going on to our supporters. I uh, actually really love the supporter count. We have four Professor Sycamore, of course. Discard your hand, draw seven. Uh, we've seen some players cutting back on their counts of Sycamore now that we have Cynthia in the format. But since this is basically an all basic deck, other than the Garboder, uh, but like I said, it's primarily an all basic deck. Since there's not a whole lot of moving pieces, we can usually freely discard our hand and draw seven without many uh, you know, downsides to that. So we're maxing out Sycamore just because this is a very aggressive deck. And also we really don't mind putting energy in the discard either because we can get it back out with Registeel and Solgaleo of Prism Star as well. But even though we are playing the four Sycamore, we're also playing three copies of the new card Cynthia. Uh, shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six just because there are certain times when you know you don't want to discard your hand and then of course three copies of n as well each player shuffles in and draws equal to the amount of prize cards they have left so if you add all that up we are playing a whopping 10 draw supporters which i gotta say feels really nice this deck rarely ever has any dead hands in my experience unless maybe like your opponent just like Maybe if you have a slow start and your opponent gets like an early garb on you or something, that's really the only time I could see this deck breaking. But most of the time, it draws very well, especially in the late game. Even once you get end, you have so many draw supporters. You have plenty of outs to 
uh, refreshing your hand. And especially since this is a deck with Garbatoxin, we're going to be shutting off access to Lele in the late game, so we want more physical copies of supporters to be able to deal with that. And then the only other supporter we're playing is a whopping four copies of Guzma. So Guzma, of course, lets us choose what we want to take knockouts on. So this enables some very aggressive plays. But also, if you've noticed, all of the Pokemon we've been talking about have horrendous retreat costs. They're all about two to three on average. So playing something like Guzma really helps us prevent our Pokemon from being stranded. Especially in the case of Dustmane Necrozma, you'll use Meteor Temps to discard your energy. And then you can't really retreat because you have a horrible retreat cost. But uh, when you play a fourth copy of Guzma, you have more out to getting out of the active spot to maybe Guzma up something and start promoting a Registeel or a Solgaleo Prismastar to get reset up again. So I absolutely love the four copies of Guzma in this deck. One of my favorite things about this list, actually. And then going on to the rest of our training cards, we have two copies of Parallel City. So Depending on which way this card faces, it has a different effect, but the, the main reason we're playing this is for the blue side of Parallel City. Uh, whatever player has that facing them, they can only have three bench Pokemon. So just in general, I think right now one of the strongest combos in the game is Garbatoxin Parallel N, especially in the late game. If you can limit your opponent's bench size, prevent them from using abilities, and put them at a low hand size, it's just one of the most oppressive combos uh, that we currently have access to. So I absolutely love Parallel City uh, in decks that play Garbodor. Uh, going on to the rest of our items, though, for Ultra Ball, pretty standard, one Super Odd, and I will touch on this for a second. Uh, Super Odd does allow us the flexibility of getting energy back from our discard pile, and you guys might be thinking, well, shouldn't you just play Rescue Stretcher? You can already get back energy with uh, Registeel and Solgate Prism Star, and while that might be true, I pretty much exclusively like Super Odd in decks that play Max Elixir, just because uh, in the late game, you can Super Odd energy back into your deck and increase your your odds of hitting them with max elixirs. If we didn't play the elixirs, I would say it's fine. Play Rescue Stretcher, but because we are playing the elixirs, I think Super Odd outclasses it a little bit in this particular list. And speaking of which, for max elixirs, this is going to be the other primary form of energy acceleration. Look at the top six cards of your deck. Attach a basic energy you find there to a basic on your bench. So between this, Registeel, and the Solgoyo Prism Star, we have plenty of ways to get energy onto the field. Uh, one field blower just to discard tool cards and stadiums and honestly this is a card I would love to find uh, space for a second copy of that's really the only thing I have to admit that I don't care about uh, or don't care for in this list I wish I could find room for just one more of these and I would like it a lot better but nevertheless the one is okay just certain times if you have to discard it early on it can it, it can't be that fun sometimes <laughs> but uh, yeah so definitely good to discard our opponents tool cards and stadiums and speaking of two cards, we're playing three copies of Choice Band just to increase our damage output, especially with Cobalion and Celesteela. Choice Band is very good. Uh, there is a consideration to be made for Fighting Fury Belt as well. Uh, that could help your Dusk Mains tank a little bit better. But right now, I'm favoring Choice Band because it just makes the math a lot better for Celesteela and Cobalion. However, if you maybe cut Cobalion and Celesteela, or at the very least Celesteela, I think you could warrant going over to Fury Belt uh, just because... Um, you know, Celesteel is the main Pokemon that I think really, really makes a huge difference for Choice Band. But like I said, if you cut it, Fury Belt might be a little bit better. So feel free to play with that and uh, figure out what you like uh, for yourself. And then the last trainer card, we have four copies of Floatstone. Like I said, everything in this deck has a terrible, terrible retreat cost. So Floatstone is going to make sure that everything has free retreat when we want it to. And also, of course, we play the Garbatox and Garbiter, so we need a tool to, to have attached to it anyways. And then, of course, to round out the list, 13 Metal Energy seems like a lot, but there's honestly times where I wish I even had a 14th just because you go through a ton of energy in this deck, and also you want to basically make sure you can always hit energy off Max Elixirs. But overall, 13 seems like a really solid number, though. But yeah, guys, that is going to be the list we're going to be trying out. Uh, let's head over to the battle portion of the video, and we'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, we have ourselves a game here. Just uh, waiting for our opponent to load, it looks like. And they're going to call the coin flip, and they have a Garchomp coin. So I'm wondering if this is going to be the new Garchomp. I think that'd be a safe assumption just because of uh, its popularity. Recently, people have been excited to try out new Ultra Prism decks. And here, it's actually a pretty good opening hand. We're starting Trubbish, not too big a deal. We want to get a float stone on it anyways because of Garbodor. But uh, if this is Garchomp, I actually... Okay, and it is Garchomp, so... 
I am actually not really sure what our game or our plan of attack here is. You know, we definitely want to get Garbatox in play because that's going to be really bad shutting off those Lucarios for our opponent. But the attackers that we have just aren't that efficient against one prize attacker. Celesteela can't take one hit knockout, other than with its GX attack, of course. Uh, Samora Lee Dustman across it can take one hit knockout, but you have to discard its energy. But here, let's uh, let's Ultra Ball. Let's get rid of the Metal and the Choice Band. Choice Band probably not too useful here unless our opponent benches a Lele at some point. So here we can get down a Registeel. And Registeel could be good in this matchup too, just because uh, Turbo Arm uh, will two-shot a lot of these basics. So let's see, we're going to grab a Lele and that seems good. We'll put the Floatstone down. I don't really want to get Sycamore and discard this Cabalion, and I don't want to bench the Cabalion yet because it's not really good until the late game. So here I'm just going to retreat into Registeel and pass. So we actually have a pretty good turn lined up for next turn. We did not get an energy attachment this turn. That is the only downside, but we do have Max Fluxers, of course, to get set up. And here, kind of as expected, yeah, it is going to be the Garchomp deck. They have Lucario and everything, so pretty, pretty standard stuff it looks like. And here, just a pass. Okay, so I'm happy to take that. So here, what do we do? We can get down the... Definitely want to get down this energy, I guess. Well, actually, we could have maybe discarded it. No, we already have one discard, so we really don't need to discard another one just yet. So here, we can Ultra Ball. And what do we want to get down? That's the question. I guess we bench our other Dusk main. That seems okay. Um, We don't need Cabalion, so we could maybe get out Celesteela. That could be a consideration could be okay uh, I don't know here what, what do we put down or we could just bench both that's okay too and we attach floats down let's just put it on maybe Registeel that way we can uh, you know retreat into another attack once we get powered up okay cool and we have parallel city as well so this is actually a pretty strong turn we got the Garbatox in play we got the parallel city in play and here we'll do turbo arm softening up this gibble uh, that way we can get some energy in the play so what do we have? Maybe our opponent has Rare Candy Garchomp and like Sycamore or something like that ready to go and they just kind of conceal the strength of their hand. That could be a potential, uh, uh, you know, could be a potential play they, they went for here. But let's have to see how they're going to do this turn. Haven't played anything yet, so maybe they have some conflicting uh, uh, decisions to make here. So they did not get an energy attachment last turn here. That's also pretty big as well. Uh, just because Garchomp is kind of reliant on every energy attachment it can. But here they're just going to have to go for a Never Enough. So that's actually really nice because... Ooh, and they had to discard double Colorless energy as well. That's that's kind of rough for our opponent there. But here what we can do is we can attach a Metal. And I think we just Sycamore the rest of this hand away. Uh, well, we could maybe attach Choice Band to maybe Lele. But honestly, I probably think we won't see any GXs or EXs this game. So let's just discard it. And okay, so nothing too much else there. We'll just turbo arm yet again, setting up uh, you know another energy on this dusk main. And next turn we can use Meteor Tempest if our opponent does manage to get a Garchomp into play. But you know our opponent is an energy attachment behind for the game so far. Okay, so they do have Rare Candy. That's a good start for them at least. Uh, but you know, like I said, they're an energy attachment behind, and Garchomp is very reliant on every single attachment it can possibly get down. So honestly, I think we're in a fine spot. Even if we have to use Meteor Tempest to take a knockout here, uh, honestly, I think we'll be okay. So your opponent's going to go for a Lucario, but uh, they do need to remember we have Garbatox in play, so they won't be able to use Precognitive Aura. So uh, something they're going to have to keep in mind there. Maybe they should have gone for maybe another Gibble, if that was the case. And here, just a pass. I'm actually completely cool with this. Let's just attach to... This uh, Dustmane Necrozma. We have Guzma ready to go for next turn as well. Oh, and we just get the victory screen. So our opponent kind of sees, you know what? Having a rough start. My opponent's too far ahead. Just going to scoop. That's fine. But let's go into another game and see if we can you know, show off the deck a little bit better. And here we see a Fighting Deck Box. And our opponent has a Mar... Or I'm sorry, Fighting Sleeves, Marsh have a Deck Box. So I don't know what we're going to be playing against. Probably Buzzwell. I think that's the safest assumption. That's the most popular fighting deck right now. Uh, but here we have actually a pretty good start. We have an Ultra Ball ready to go. We can get Lele if we have to. Uh, more importantly, we can put the Metal Energy in the discard pile as well. So let's see what we're going to be going up against. And I'm going to hold on to the Cabalion. No real need to bench it just yet. Okay, and this does look like it's going to be a Buzzwell deck. Here, they're getting down there. If they had to discard a strong energy, that could be bad for them, but 
Arpo's having a pretty good start here. They have the Rock Rock, two, two Buzz Balls, Remoraid. They do luckily with a Max Luxor. Okay, I'm really happy about that, actually. And they have another one. Do they hit this one? And I'm assuming they if it's taken them this long to decide, they probably should decide where do they want to put the attachment. Probably thinking, do we put it on the other Buzzwell or we start powering up uh, Lycan Rock? Okay, it looks like they are opting for the Rock Rup. I think that's fine. And I don't know what else our opponent really needs this turn. They had a pretty crazy first turn. Hopefully we can have something similar. Uh, Buzzle is going to be putting a ton of pressure on us, so we really need to get set up as quick as possible. So here we can bench the Cabalion, potentially. Definitely want to discard a Metal Energy. And maybe we could discard Cabalion and Super Rod it later. That seems okay, I suppose. Here we'll just go for a Trubbish. Definitely going to be a... Pokemon we want to set up in this matchup, turn off our opponent's Lycan Rocks and their Remoraids, I'm sorry, Octillaries. Just taking a peek through the deck, see what all we have access to. So here we can Bench Trubbish, we can attach Choice Band to the active, and uh, you know start doing 60 to this puzzle and start putting on some pressure of our own here. So here we can just Sycamore, and nice, we have Parallel City, definitely a card we want to see here, prevent our opponent from benching anything else, limiting them just down to three Pokemon. So here we can do Turbo Arm, and we'll just do 60 and start getting some energy on this Dustman the Crossma. And we could have put down some more tools, but just a general rule of thumb, I try not to put down any tools until I need them, just because, uh, just in case of a Field Blower or something like that. So let's see what our opponent is going to do this turn. If they can pull off a knockout on this Dustman the Crossma, that would actually be pretty bad. So that's one thing I'm a little scared of, but right now, honestly, I think we're safe. Just to be honest, they would have to hit like double max elixir, attach Guzma. But here we're just going to see an attachment to the active side. I'm actually really happy about that. Uh, you know, they're committing more energy to a Pokemon that's getting damaged. So I definitely like to see that. And we have a pretty good turn of our own or ready to go next turn. But unfortunately, our opponent bumps Parallel City. Ooh, and they have Pseudo Widow. That is actually going to be pretty bad for us. It has that watch and learn attack. Uh, if your opponent used an attack on their last turn, you do the same attack. So it's going to be, um, that's pretty good against Duskmane Necrozma. So just trying to think, what do we do here, though? And I'm kind of worried about a Lycan Rock, like Dangerous Rogue GX as well. We definitely want to bench the Duskmane Necrozma. But actually, our opponent is probably more likely to go for an Absorption GX, since they already almost have this Buzzwell powered up, but... So here, let's max elixir. I guess we can do that. Start getting more energy in play. That seems pretty good to me. So we can do that. Probably get some energy on this dusk main that already has some energy on it. Uh, we still have an attachment for turn as well, which is pretty big. But um, we actually might need to discard the energy because I don't know if we have any more in our discard pile. So here, let's go for the garbutter. This could be good as well. So we can lele grab ourselves like a sycamore or something. And then get our Garbatoxin Toxin into play and show off abilities. That could be good. Prevent them from getting uh, Lycan Rock to bring up our Dusk Main, or getting out Octillery to draw more cards. So here we'll put the Choice Band on probably Lele. That seems like the best bet. We could put it on Garb, but I think we still have. Yeah, we have four Float Stones left in deck, so our odds are pretty good of hitting our tool that we need. Nice, and we do hit the Float Stone. So definitely the right call, attaching the Lele right there. So what I'm thinking though is. We're going to Turbo Arm for sure, but where do we put the Metal Energy? So, a couple things I'm worried about is if our opponent has Guzma and Attachment, they can Absorption GX knocking out uh, our fully powered Dusk Main that, if we go that route. Or we could put it on the other Dusk Main, which is probably a bit safer. Basically, we're just kind of saying, hey, you, you need Guzma Attach uh, to take a knockout on this powered up Dusk Main. And I'm thinking they probably don't have it. Uh, they can't use Lycan Rock. They can't use Octillery to draw more cards. So I feel like I feel like we're maybe safe here. So probably gets down a Float Stone on Soda Widow. That's fine to me. And with oh man, they have the Guzma. Okay, so a little risky going for the uh, Dusk Main, but hey, it's it's not the end of the world. I guess it could be worse. So they are going to go down to four prizes, but that's okay. We have Garbatox in play, and we have an N ready to go on the next turn as well. So honestly, you know what? E even though they are going to take a knockout here, their buzzle is pretty heavily damaged. And actually, if I get 
Max Elixir attach on Lele. We can just take a knockout with Lele instead here. Okay, and what do we do? What do we do? What, do, what else do we bench? That's the real question. So they used Absorption GX, so we can kind of freely bench anything we want, uh, just because we don't have to worry about a dangerous rogue at this point. We're going to get down the Floatstone on Duskmane. Uh, we don't really need Choice Band on it in this matchup. So, yeah, let's just go for the end. I really don't need the other things on the bench. And here we get Max Luxor. We really need to hit this. It's going to be really important. So, let's see. Max Luxor, do not fail me. And we hit it. Very nice, very nice. So now we can attach that to the Lele and attach return to Lele, uh, which will be enough to take a knockout. And here I'm also going to get rid of... So we can get a Brooklet Hill or a tool or two tools, but I think I like the idea of getting rid of both of their tools uh, just because that won't allow them to have a Pokemon to freely retreat into or freely retreat out of uh, after we knock out this Buzzwool. So I don't really mind Brooklet Hill. I really don't care what else they get into play at this point. They already have basically all of their... Uh, main Pokemon in play as it is. But here we get another Peril City, definitely a good card to health prizes and an energy. Seems okay. So we're going to see a Fighting coming out on Buzzle. I'm actually fine with that because we can kind of just two shot this Buzzle pretty comfortably uh, with this Lele. So, uh, I mean, usually you go for Heavy Dusk Main to Crosma and just Meteor Tempest a bunch, but sometimes uh, Energy Drive is just better. <laughs> it is a little bit quicker to power up sometimes. But here our opponent's going to Sycamore. And nice, they've already gotten rid of three energy. They have another basic fighting in play, so I'm hoping maybe their max elixirs won't work quite as well uh, for the rest of this game. So let's see, they have Octillery in play. I mean, it doesn't do them much good since we have the Garboder up and running already. Here we're just going to see a Jet Punch. I'm actually completely cool with that, though. So right now we're hitting, what was that, 2040, 60, 80? Uh... I'm sorry, 90 right now. So what we need to do is we need another attachment on on this Lele to be able to two-shot this Buzzwell. Unfortunately, having 190 hit points is actually pretty uh, pretty annoying for us right here. So I would like to power up Duskmane, but again, for us to two-shot this Buzzwell effectively, we really need to attach the Lele. But here we're going to Max Luxor, and luckily we at least get one extra attachment onto this Duskmane because I really want to get that powered up. Uh, to kind of finish off the game at some point. More than likely, we're going to two-shot this Buzzwell, and we're going to have to deal with that Lycanroc at some point. So I want to be able to knock out a fresh Lycanroc when the time comes. Up here we're going to end. And okay, that hand is not too great. We do have the Solgaleo Prism Star, so we could bench that. Um, but honestly, I, we could bench it and like in case of an end, but honestly, if our opponent ends us, I think that would be fine. So honestly, I might just keep it in hand and kind of bait the end if possible. All right, here, our opponent's gonna attach the choice band to Buzzwell. I'm actually cool with that. That means they won't be able to retreat out of the active spot this turn. And they have Field Blower, so that's a little unfortunate, but we do have a Floatstone ready to go. I'm sure they're gonna get rid of the tool on our Garbatoxin, but like I said, I'm completely okay with that. And they got rid of our Peril City. Um, that's cool with me. So they're going to super out. I would imagine getting back some energy. Oh, okay. So two Rock Ruffs and a late. I'm actually, again, completely okay with that. That, that means their Max Luxers are not going to work uh, quite as effectively. And they get rid of another Fighting Energy. So that's, I'm actually really excited about that because right now their Max Luxers are probably like not having the highest chances of hitting. I mean, they do have 15 cards left in deck, so maybe they can hit some actually. Here they're gonna get down a float stone and just do jet punch to us. Again, I'm completely okay with this. We're gonna be able to two shot this uh, buzzle pretty comfortably. And so this turn, I actually might get down the slugway because if our opponent knocks out this Lele and ends us, we really need to have that slugway in play to uh, power up our board again. Okay, so we're gonna do 110, knocking out that buzzle. Getting a Garber, but we do get a Cynthia off the prizes. So that is definitely good. If our opponent does not end us, we will have a way to hopefully get ourselves some energy and, you know, set up our board again to kind of finish up uh, this game. So our opponent has an Octillery. Uh, basically, they need an Elixir and attachment to Suda Widow if they want to take a knockout on this Lele this turn. So they need, if we can survive that, if our opponent can just knock, okay, they max elixir, big elixir right here. Do they hit it? 
Ugh, and they do get it. Okay, so that means our Lele is probably going to go down here, and we're going to see an N. Okay, I'm cool with this. I'm actually really happy our opponent evolved the Lycanroc, uh, just because if they have a Field Blower for the rest of the game, that basically takes the uh, option for another Bloodthirsty Eyes out of the picture. And here, the, our two cards are pretty bad. We, we just really need an energy here um, to make sure our opponent doesn't just like run over us. Nice, okay, so we do hit the energy. We do have a Guzma, but honestly what I'd like to do is use a Radiant Star here. And honestly, uh, we should have benched the the other Dustmane Necrozma actually. So I think that's a little bit of a misplay here. Got a little too excited to use my attack. So here we'll definitely power up this guy. And uh, I guess we can put the other energy on the Solgaleo. I think that's an option that'll give us the option to um, manually retreat if we have to, because it does have a three retreat cost. And so we have yet another energy to play with. We could just put it on this active. I think that's okay too, because if we have a choice ban, we that gives us an out to knocking out Buzzwolves. So I guess that seems all right to me. And we don't have any more energy in the discard. So we won't be able to use Radiant Star next turn, but like I said, we have Goose ready to go, so we can just win next turn. Uh, unless our opponent has an end, that would actually be pretty bad for us. See their Ultra Wall, I'm getting rid of a Regirock. I did not notice the other card they got rid of. So they're going for a Lele. That kind of tells me they don't have Field Blower. Oh, and they have the end, so that's actually like super annoying. Alrighty, but we do have a draw supporter, so we might have to buy ourselves a turn of just... Uh, trying to draw into the Sycamore for next turn. Here, we don't really need Celesteela, so I think what we'll just do is just Sycamore this hand away. That could be good. That'll give us the most amount of uh, odds of drawing into Guzma for next turn. Okay, nice. So we do hit that. And what I might do here is... Just in case we get End again, um, I think I'm going to play the Ultra Ball. We can get rid of the Trubbish and... Maybe the Choice Band. Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll keep the choice man just in case of Corona Impact. Uh, let's get rid of Super Out. I really don't think we're going to need that at this point in the game. You know, if, I don't think there's anything we really want to recover at this point. So let's just grab a Lele just in case our opponent hits us with a Field Blower or something like that. That's probably the, the best Pokemon to get in this situation, I think. So that seems good. And, okay, so... We could Corona Impact and go down to one prize... And that would set us up to just retreat and Sunseal Strike next turn. But honestly, I think I might just pass. Because if our if we knock out Octillery and our opponent has uh, an attachment and a Guzma, they can actually just Guzma up the, our Dusk Main and take a knockout with Suda Widow. So I think this is probably safer. We'll bench the Lele, just getting it you know, on the field just in case of another end. We want to make sure we hit a Guzma off end if our opponent has it, of course. So let's see... What do they have here? Because right now, since we did not attack, uh, Suda Widow can't attack this turn, and Lycanroc can't attack. But here, our opponent just passes, and we have the Guzma. So that means we can bring up Lycanroc, and our boy Dustman the Cosmo can finally get in this game and start using Meteor Tempest. So yeah, we're going to knock out Lycanroc, taking our last two prizes, and so that means we are going to win the game against Buzzwell Lycanroc. So, yeah, guys, that is going to be the Duskmane Magnazone, or pff, not Magnazone, <laughs> Duskmane Necrozma GX uh, Garboder deck. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, I actually really do enjoy this deck. I think I might like this better than the Magnazone version. Definitely a lot more consistent. You have an element of control in the deck with Parallel City and Garboder. And overall, the deck just feels really nice, and uh, it's pretty fun to play, too. But, uh, yep, yeah, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it'd be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.